do not be afraid of these. They are just to hang my aerial hammock from when I do my stretches. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, welcome back to Good Earth Homestead and Eden's Angora. Today is an exciting day because I'm going to show you my woolery, the heart of Eden's Angora. Just open it all up to you guys and hopefully you'll learn a little bit about all of the crazy equipment you need to get serious about fiber arts. down and have a chat. Whew, that was a lot of stuff and it might look a little bit messy and disorganized but this is the most organized it has been in a long time. Thus my courage to show you this video. So without further ado I'm going to switch my camera around and give you a little more of an in-depth tour to the best of my ability. It is going to be a little bit hard to hold the camera and show you everything and I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions for me in the comments and that is great. Please do leave all your comments and your questions below. Hopefully this is at least helpful to some extent or just satisfies your curiosity about what goes on in my woolery here at Eden. Okay, here's where it all starts. The door. It's funny how many people walk into my house. This is like an entryway of my house and nobody says anything about this sign. It's so weird to me. Like, wouldn't you be remotely curious? Anyway, this is what the woolery looks like when you just come into it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, gorgeous. And we'll start, how about somewhere simple? This is Rosemary, my pride and joy, Ashford traditional spinning wheel. Oh my goodness, the fun that we have had together. Below her is a nice handy storage tub filled to the brim with alpaca. So um, it's great, it works as, as additional seating as well. And I have found that storing my wheel up off the floor when I'm not using it, just opens up enough space for me to move around or let bunnies run around in here. So that's why I choose to store her up there. Then, since this is close to my chair, it's usually whatever projects I'm working on now. So right now I'm working on this gorgeous unicorn yarn, and I have everything right there to keep on building that. Also tucked there is my rabbit grooming table with a little mat to keep their feet from slipping because I also frequently groom my rabbits in here when the weather is not ideal, which is pretty much constantly here in Virginia. So behind my chair, I told you I was gonna get into it, right? We're gonna get into it. It's another just stacks of bags of fiber, which is just wonderful, most of that. I ended up just picking up for free along the way. When people know you're a fiber artist, if they come across fiber, they know who it can go to that will appreciate it, so that's great. This is my other rack that I have a bunch of different Angora fleeces in waiting to be spun. And then up here is my yarn display. And these are all of the yarns that I've recently made and I need to wash. There's some more unicorn yarn. Isn't that the best? So exciting. This is the best um, yarn I feel like I've made, or at least the most complicated one. It has so many different colors and the chocolate Angora is from Bratman, one of my favorite bunnies of all time. Then we have some bubble yarn. 
and some really fun mohair and giant angora. And then this is a new project I'm working on, some horse reins made from a yarn that I spun from horse hair. Okay, now we get to this beautiful table that my mother redid. So there's another talent. That's probably where I get some of my creativity. So she graciously allowed me to have this for the woolery. It is just stunning and so inspiring. So here I have my ball winding supplies. Whoa! This is a very, very fun tool that while it does seem overpriced, when you start doing this with it, it's just suddenly totally worth it. It's just, it's worth its weight in gold, just in fun factor. Um, but you put the, these skeins of yarn on it, umbrella it on out there. Let's do that one more time. And then this is my ball winder that works with it. So this fun umbrella just spins around and the ball winder just sucks that yarn on up. Um, this ball winder has all metal parts. I highly, highly recommend you go the extra mile and get the metal gears. I've had to fix it several times myself already, but it's it's uh, just by adjusting it. I haven't had to replace anything. Nothing's going to break on that thing, which is awesome. Then I have Esmeralda, my lovely model there. You know, I was going to ask you guys for help naming her, but Esmeralda just rolled right off my tongue. So if you are a fan of that, give this video a thumbs up. See what I did there? Um, and she's wearing some of our Eden's Angora fashions that are waiting to find other people to wear them. This is the oatmeal snood. It's my first thing that I really made. I have a lot of pride in that. And I made it out of 100% English Angora from Timber, who was just a real sweetheart. And then I have this scarf that I've been working on probably forever and a day, maybe two days. We have our bunnies lots of yarn balls and just kind of inspiring dyed um, fibers that I've just kept out for a little while so that I can think. I like this, having kind of an inspiration table a little bit, like this is what I do and this is some stuff I can think about working with. I like leaving some things out. Then I got this little case, which is just beautiful to display some of my bracelets in that I'm working on. All right, so I wish we could skip over this section, but we really can't because you need somewhere to store all of your little things, right? All the little supplies that you need, like crochet hooks. We have darning needles in here. We have dyes and um, dye wash. You don't really need stamps in there. That's besides the point. Whoa, okay. This is mostly, okay. These are important. They're for tying your yarn up. When it's in skeins like that, see all the different ties I have on it to keep it organized. Um, my charger for my clippers, rabbit grooming supplies. Um, yeah, bunches of odds and ends that you do need and you need to know where they are. So it just, it helps to have that there. And then my little scale for weighing balls of yarn to know how much fiber I have in them. All right, now we're on to the freezer table. So this is my drum carter. I've introduced that in another video that goes more in depth. And my bat pick, my brush, packer brush, my cleaner brush. Right now I'm working on some gorgeous bats of 100% alpaca from my friend Terry in Canada. Um, so she's been waiting a really t long time for her fleeces to be hand processed into yarn. And I'm determined this time I'm going to bat up all of her fiber until it is complete. So that's there. Also my tea. My husband swears it's the most horrible idea in the world to have tea in a woolery. And maybe some of you are thinking that he's right, but hopefully at least one or two people are thinking, man, it's too yummy. 
Like, of course she's going to have tea in there. I mean, come on. Who can, who can work on fiber without tea? Okay. So moving on from the all essential tea, here is where I store all of Terry's fleece. I find that when people give me fleeces to work on, which please direct message me, I will do your hard work for you. It's what I do. But anyway, I like to keep people's fleeces separate from mine so I just don't get confused. So that's all Terry's stuff in there. Then I have my original wool cards, which are more sentimental now than anything else because I adore this beauty right here. But these guys, they gave me my start and I'm just so grateful to them that I have to keep them on display. Do, 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 Okay. Um, <laughs> below that, we have my rabbit spinner. This is not for the wool cards, contrary to what I just showed you, but it is multifunctional. I really like this thing. Let me see where it's from. And really, I should have like Amazon links or something all set up so I can make money from doing this. But alas, I'm just not that good with technology yet. Anyway, this I know I got from Amazon. It is a rabbit grooming pedestal and it really helps. I put it on my folding table over here when I'm shearing and I can just spin the rabbit to the section that I want and they tend to stay more still because you're spinning them around hopefully very slowly so they don't get too dizzy um but anyway they seem to realize it's unstable and just stay put and be good potatoes last but not least see I told you it was for a hammock there you go um we have this section and Again, usually in this adorable basket, I have something that I'm working on currently. So I'm blending this nylon with giant angora and putting that into my unicorn yarn. So that's on the top. Have some bo boxes for packaging. And a lot of this is fiber bunny jackets, very essential for when you're shearing and it's cold. And more packaging supplies and then down here at the very bottom buried i have my inventory and my tattoo kit so that's for uh tattooing the rabbits i did use a pen when i first got started but nowadays it's my anxiety it's just better to get it done one two three with a nice clamp so I do use a numbing spray as well before I just one, two, three, clamp. Um, I also recommend, and I, I didn't find in my own Woolery tour, I did not find my business cards or my cute little things, but I do have a bunch of pictures of my rabbits. And when you buy something from me made from one of my rabbits, you'll get a picture of the rabbit. And then on the back, I write a little note from them with some personalized things about them and I think it just adds a really nice touch. It elevates things and helps you know what you're supporting when you're buying from a small business like this that's just completely all about the rabbits. So I think that is it. Oh this is my nice short rabbit playpen. I just use it to block off the perimeter of all the dangerous areas and then the rabbits can run around in this area while I'm working and it's just so nice for me and for them. So since we are going in depth, this is my bunny pillow. Absolutely love this and it's stuffed with belly wool from my Angoras. So it's kind of nice to have something stuffed with Angora. Um, and that's how I used my belly wool for the last little bit of time. But now I do something else with it. If you're curious what that is, I'll do another video on that. So I actually have a question for you guys too. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, then that means you're interested in fiber arts. But I'd like to know how many of you are following me for fiber arts content and how many of you are following me for homesteading or homesteading with chronic illness type content. 
Um, the reason why I'm asking is because it does take a lot of effort to make these videos and I want to make sure that I'm showing you content that you that are subscribed to me actually want to see. If Esmeralda is not the right name for my mannequin, then please drop some name suggestions below as well. And feel free to ask me about different things you've seen in the woolery. If you say, what is that blue thing in the corner? I can't guarantee I'll know what you're talking about, but I'll do my best. All right, guys, I hope this was a helpful and fun video for you. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support me in a more direct way, please visit my Etsy shop at Eden's Angora. I'll try to get a link to that below, even though I'm technologically challenged. Have a great day, guys. Bye.